Hey beautiful people, and welcome to the third part of Making Throne of Fire. If you haven't seen the first two videos, or even the actual time-lapse video, click here on the card icon. I am aware that there are several different types of methods uh, to editing time-lapses. I will be sharing with you my own workflow and the reasons behind it. Now if there are more efficient methods, please don't hesitate to comment below and tell me about it. I would love to know if there's something more efficient out there. So let's jump right in. We're gonna be looking at three programs that I use for this, for the editing process. Lightroom, After Effects, and Premiere. So the very first program after I photographed the time lapses out in the field is Lightroom. Now, the reason why I use Lightroom rather than just putting it in Premiere or putting it into After Effects and, and toning them that way these are images still before I even create video. So I'm very aware and I'm very efficient in Lightroom when it comes to post-production. And so I already had the tone in mind and how I wanted it to feel, especially, especially since the exposure changes. So I compensate for that a lot easier in Lightroom for me than, than trying to do it in Premiere or After Effects. So yeah, let me show you real quick. Um, what the original raw file looked like. This is the process file. This is what the original file looked like. Very different, right? And so this is how, that's why it's always a good thing to shoot raw no matter what. Um, you have that ability to push the pixels. So here's before, let me just put this full screen. Here's before and here's after. Very, <laughs> what a difference really, really was. Now, one thing I did learn um, that you always have to be aware of. Uh, I haven't cleaned my sensor, my D750, uh, since I've been back from Zambia since last year. Wow, it's been a year. And so um, there's a lot of dust there and I've, I should have took the time to actually clean that up. So I don't know if you can see at the top here, these little black spots, but the biggest spot is this thing here. And <laughs> I tried to take it out but since there's movement, um, you can tell that there was something missing here, information here missing. So I left it. I didn't like leaving it, um, but that's what it has to happen. Uh, that's what had to happen because I, I'm not gonna sit there and try to edit it out and make it look even worse. Um, so yeah, rule of thumb, if you're doing time-lapse, make sure your sensor and lenses <clears throat> are clean. Now the longest part will have to have been exporting these images. Now. What I, the first time I did this, I exported it almost, at almost full resolution, and that was a mistake because one, Lightroom has a hard time exporting large images, uh, so it took hours to export. Two, you're creating a much larger file. In Lightroom, you have the file settings, image size, and that's what we're primarily wor worried about. Now, of course, you could tell it where to go, but I was exporting everything that uh, 100 percent quality and 72 resolution at 6,000 pixels um, on its longest side and so those are creating files about six to seven megabytes and that's huge when you have images uh, a sequence that contains more than 500 images in it so I had to reevaluate and figure out okay what can I sacrifice but still retain the quality I still kept it at 6,000 pixels and 72 resolution but all I did was bring this down to about 80. And that allowed my files to be much smaller, around two to three megabytes, which helped a lot, especially when, when, when rendering in After Effects and Premiere. And we're gonna to get to that right now. So if you're ever doing anything in 6K, it's okay if you could bring your quality down because you wanna have a small file, but still have, still retain quality. 